Hello, everybody, and welcome to Early Access Podcast, episode 26. I am your host, Angelo, and I am exhausted. I just got through three reviews, and with the launch of the new website and everything, and moving all the files over, um, it's just been a long day, and I am glad to finally be back in the review train and getting reviews out. So I just uploaded three new ones to... um, to the YouTube channel. I'll have formal reviews written in a couple days. Um, and I work two jobs tomorrow, so I'm not going to be able to do it. Sorry if there's a hum in the background on this one. It's really hot in my apartment today, so I have the air on, so there's going to be the AC hum in the background, and I apologize for that. <clears throat> but uh, quickly, earlyaccessmedia.com for all the reviews now. Just wanted to let you guys know earlyaccesspodcast.com is just going to be the RSS feed for the podcast there's links on there to get you back over to the new website and the new website it's not just going to be video games but it's also going to show um you know movie indie movies and indie um music and just indie going ons you know i I went to a food truck festival over the weekend in philadelphia and i decided to write up an article about that because it's coming to baltimore um in a couple in like about a month so i did a little write-up on that and it's going to be stuff like that it's going to be you know, cool things that are happening um, within the the small development world of everything, not just video games. But my main focus will still be video games. I'm trying to get other people to take the reins on the music and movies aspect and then keep the Early Access podcast what it is. And maybe once a month do a roundtable podcast with everybody. And, you know, you can skip those ones if you want or you can listen to them and, you know, enjoy them for what they are. But... What you are here for today is video games, so we're going to jump into that. So I just got done playing all three of these games. They're all pretty fresh in my memory. So the first game is this game called Soul Locus. Now, Soul Locus is a tower defense game with some RPG elements. I talked about it a couple episodes ago. Um, Let's see, it's $14.99. It's got 10 positive uh, reviews, and it's actually really neat. It's... um, you know, kind of like a Pokemon tower defense game. So you start off and you get cards that are different locuses and you upgrade them throughout the match. And then at the end of every match, they level up. You add, uh, you know, you can you get points at the end of every so many levels. You can put points into them to increase their attack, their range, and their speed. And um, as the game goes on, it's got your typical tower defense tropes, waves of enemies come after you. Um, they all have different abil- like uh, you know different things that affect all the enemies. Um, I'm trying to think something was pissing me off about it. <clears throat> no, it wasn't pissing me off. Uh, um, you gain focus. Your focus is what allows you to uh, place your uh, locuses, and you also use the focus to upgrade your locuses throughout the match. And you can evolve them. So they have the one had four different uh, stages. One of them had two. It is an early access, so it doesn't seem like they all um, have everything yet. However, I think this game's got a lot of promise. There's only 10 levels right now in an endless wave mode. Uh, eventually, I see it uh, becoming pretty deep. You know, they have... Um, it's only been out for like a week, a little over a week. And they've been updating it pretty consistently, adding new levels, uh, new locuses, or I think they're guardians are called. Um, it's an alpha build though, you know, 15 bucks is a little high for an alpha build, so I, I would give it a little bit, or check my video and see if it's something that you'd be into playing. I enjoyed it, I, I could see put back in these guys and giving them your $15. Um, it's a cute little game, it takes some of the stuff from a tower defense and does some really neat things with it. Um, so I think the concept's good, it plays well, and think it's worth your time if you like tower defense games all right so the next game i played is one that i spoke about a couple weeks ago as well it's called galicide and galicide came out april 24th it's got four positive reviews uh it's 9.99 now this game i definitely recommend picking up for 10 bucks um again it's not a complete game it is an early access um there's no campaign right now uh there's an endless mode I think it's endless. I can't remember now. 
uh, there's a training mode that takes you through how to play the game, and then there's like a, I think it's just an endless wave-based mode that you can keep playing until you die. Um, and so Galicide is a twin-stick shooter. Um, I don't know if the co-op works yet. Does it say it does? Yeah, it does have local co-op right now. Um, best way to play it I found was with the controller but so it's a twin stick shooter that has really cool aspects to it so what you do is you're moving your ship around back and forth across the screen like a normal twin stick shooter like side scrolling twin stick shooter but what happens is these bits come across and bits are like these little you know squares that are connected they're all different colors but as you go you pick up different colored um, bits and you would shoot them at it so it's like a puzzle game and a twin stick shooter um, it's hard. It's a lot of action. It's, I, I think it's really awesome. Like it's a cool concept. Again, it's another mashup of of games that I've never played before. I, I've never seen anything like this. If there is anything like this out there, um, but yeah, it's a it's a cool matching puzzle game, like inside of a twin stick shooter shell. So it's you know fast paced, bullets flying everywhere. You're blowing everything up. Um, there's different ships. I, there was three of four it looked like available so far. One's your typical uh, ship. You do more damage. Y your abilities just make you, um, well, as you level up, um, you shoot, you know, try shot, and, and then you get a laser beam that shoots across the screen. That's pretty awesome. Um, one allows you to collect the bits so you can cycle through them. To help with the puzzles, it makes it a little bit easier. I didn't really like it too much because it took. I didn't really understand it at first, um, and it was slow. The ship was very slow. It didn't do a lot of damage, but it lets you hold up to three when it's max level, and you, you can shoot the, you can shoot them or you can cycle through them, and um, it just makes it easier to get through the puzzles because then you're not collecting one, shooting it, grabbing another one, shooting that one, um, and the third ship was a charge up attack which I didn't like at all um, I thought it was too slow but and it couldn't take a hit like you had less health and everything um, but like I said I think it's a cool mashup of two different genres and I think they did a really good job with it and I think it still needs a little bit of work and there's no campaign yet so there's a lot coming for this game in the future and for ten dollars and the unique aspects of it I would I would check it out all right, I just got I literally just got done playing this game right before I uh, started recording this episode and it's called Castaway Paradise. Now, Castaway Paradise um, it's 10% off, it's 1349, it's usually $15. Uh, came out May 4th, so a week ago today. Uh, well, a week ago yesterday if you're listening to this the day it goes up on iTunes. They say it's like an Animal Crossing or Harvest Moon. I've never played any of those games, but I know what they are. I know they're open world sim games that you know people like to spend a lot of time in. This is similar to that from what I played of it. It, however, let's see. It says nine reviews. There's one negative. Now I read the negative review, and this guy said that he's just pissed off because it's a cash grab, freemium Farmville. Um, it was th this definitely was an iPad game however they did what they're supposed to do when you port it over to the PC and they took all the cash parts out of it that's why they're charging for it um, which I think would work with a lot of those games like I think Farmville you take all the um, you know all the pay to play and pay to accelerate uh, parts of a game like Farmville out and I think there's a lot of gameplay there I mean, what are you doing? You're playing stuff and selling it. You're doing stupid little quests and everything. But that's what a lot of these games are. And I think with it, it, it is an early access. So as time goes on, they're going to fix a lot of the interface problems. You know, it still says tap to do things. Um, there's still timers and stuff that need to be worked out. But they got rid of everything else. Like, you can earn everything by playing the game. There's no artificial gates or anything. Not, not from what I saw in the hour or so I played. Um, but yeah, you're dropped on a planet. I mean, on, you wash up on shore on an island. There's a bunch of a anthropomorphic characters, kind of like uh, Animal Crossing. Um, it looks like the season changed from the pictures I'm looking at. I didn't get to that point yet. Um, but yeah, you level up. You have a house that you can build and add stuff to it, just like an Animal Crossing. Um, and there's quests that you do to get crystals, and the crystals allow you to buy things. You can plant uh, 
crops and sell them. You upgrade all your buildings. You move across the island. You know, for for fifteen dollars, it seems like they already did a lot of legwork with the mobile version, and now all they're gonna do is try to optimize it the best they can for PC. Um, you know, if you've been looking for an Animal Crossing style game on PC, like on a PC, I think this is gonna be fine. Um, there is no Animal Crossing on. Nah, there's no Animal Crossing or your Harvest Moons on on Steam. So, you know, for for this type of game, this genre of game, for fifteen dollars, I think you're gonna get a lot of play out of it. Um, you know, I put I put about an hour into it. I only got to level five. So. I, who knows how and that's only it looks like that's only one island and I wasn't even close to getting off of that one island yet so you're definitely going to get your money's worth support the developer so they can keep making this kind of game because who knows maybe their next game like this will be on PC first before it goes to uh, the the iPad and I think it, I don't know if it's on the iPhone but the iOS in general or Android or the mobile platforms uh, I liked it I, th I think if you like these kinds of game you'll probably enjoy it as well all right so let's go to new releases so let's see I got there's four games that came out since the last episode this game is called shrooms um, it's 1349 it's 10% off so it's usually 15 bucks it's got 10 reviews it looks like nine of them are positive um, it's another survival horror game. Uh, this one has a unique, like a unique aspect to it that I don't understand without having played it. But it says mutate your body to fit your gameplay and survive alone or with your friends in the exotic fungi-covered world of shrooms. So it looks like you can, you know, adapt to your surroundings, pick stuff up off the ground that allows you to change your abilities. Um, but it's a it's a survival horror game uh, not horror game but it's a survival game you know um you run around collect shit but it really depends on what this mutate uh survival adaption like adaptation ability that they have in here is um since i haven't played it i can't really recommend it or not however at least they're doing something different with this genre and they're trying to make it make it unique the game looks nice uh it's got a different aesthetic to to these other games that i've ever seen um so you know i'm in the, these kinds of games but i don't have time to play them right now so if you're in the survival games go check it out do your research I, i'm trying to get it get a copy of it um hopefully hopefully i can pick it up and play it for you guys but you know with so many survival games I, i'm not going to spend 15 dollars on it because i know i won't get fifteen dollars out of it myself but if they give it to me i'll be more than happy to put a couple hours into it for you for for a quick look for you guys all right so next game i think looks awesome i've never heard of it before but it seems to be built off of a board game and it's called boss monster um yeah just boss monster it's got 24 reviews 83 percent positive i don't i don't know i'm guessing it's, it doesn't have the kinks worked out and people are butthurt um seven bucks still in early access and it, it's a card it's a deck building game um i don't know if you've ever played games like ascension or um god i guess i guess cthulhu is a deck building game I'm trying to think of another one the only one i can think of off the top of my head is ascension um so that's the kind of game it looks like to me i, I don't know much about it because it doesn't have anything in the description really it's just like it's based off of the board game so let's see about this game what is boss monster so you're playing cards uh use room cards to build a dungeon so you're building the dungeon while you play um it's online multiplayer so you can play it with other people so the cards build out i get it now the cards build out the dungeon and you're also playing cards to fight your way through the dungeon um i like when they make animated versions of card games personally i think they're a lot of fun i think they do a lot of neat things with it um so i would check it out it's only seven dollars and it it's a port of a card game so if you played the card game before i'm sure you'll like it too all right what do we got which one of these do i want to do all right we'll do train valley so this game is called train valley it's an early access it's got 24 reviews uh, 95% positive, which is pretty good. 
Um, it's $9.99. Let's see when this came out. It came out the seventh, so a couple days ago. What is day, Dev Game? I don't know what Dev Game is. It's a, they won some awards at Dev Game and Casual Connect. I don't know what either of those are. So this is a it's a train building sim. So you're gonna build railways. You gotta manage traffic and survive. I guess it's just like a train management sim. Um, let's see, it takes place in. Europe, America, Japan, the USSR in 1830 to 2020. There's a story mode for the gold rush of 1849 to the first manned space flight, and then explore the random mode. Management, construction, trains. Welcome to Train Valley. Um, see, these sim games aren't really my thing, but the thing is, like, I know trains are popular. So if this is your kind of thing, like if you like these sim games, um, I would check it out. You know, you get a bunch of them, but I don't think I've ever seen a train simulator. Let me see. Is there a tra train simulator? Oh, there is a train train simulator 2015. Now, is this like a legit train simulator, though? That's the thing. Come on, load. Well, this has got mixed reviews, though. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, this is just like <clears throat> an actual train simulator. Um, so, let's see. Train management. <clears throat> train Valley. Now, I got Train Valley. That's the newest one. You got a couple other ones that came out over the years, it looks like. But this one's cartoony, top down. It seems good. The reviews seem positive enough. So if you're into that, go check it out. I'm sure you can find a review somewhere. Because um, I haven't done one yet. So, all right. Last game that came out is this game called Revenge Robar's Myth. I think it's Robar's. I don't. R H O B A R S. Robar's. Robar. Ro Robar's. All right, Robar's Revenge. Um, it's an RPG, it looks like. Single player. Um, first person. It's in the Unreal Engine. Let me skip through the trailer real quick. So, a magical world full of witchcraft and wizardry awaits you. Learn world around you. Experience a breathtaking plot about the lost wizard Robar and challenge yourself in the doesn't say. Well, I'm challenge yourself in the free roam mode. Oh, so it's like a puzzle game. That's what it, it's a it's a first no, it's not even first person. It's just a 3D puzzle game. So fuck if I know. It's ten dollars. Uh no reviews yet, so honestly I have no idea. Yeah, no public reviews yet. Oh, it is first person. That guy was carrying a wand. Luminous spell. So you're like Harry Potter? Kind of looks like Harry Potter. I don't know. I've never played this game before. I, there's no reviews, so I can't even give you like an idea of like what other people are thinking about it. So that's a thing, I guess. <laughs> All right, let's jump, jump to uh, updates. So the game Sins of a Dark Age was in early access for about the last year. Um, it's a MOBA. It's free to play. Um, I kn the thing is, like, it's free to play. I know it's been a part of the Steam store for a while. Like, you could sell items in it um, or from it for quite a while now because they were giving them out not this past Christmas. I want to say the Christmas before or the summer before they were giving out uh, items for this in one of the events. Um, but it's a free-to-play MOBA. Obviously, it's going to have mixed reviews because it's a MOBA. Um, I, pl I think I played it a while ago. Maybe I'll jump back in and check it out now that it's out of early access. Um, yeah, the, the reviews are mixed. You, people people are real sticklers for their MOBAs. You got, you got Dota 2 and you got League of Legends. And then there's, you know, Heroes of New Earth and your number of other ones that people tend to like but I don't give a shit um, but I would go check it out it's, it's not a I mean they're all the same game basically in my opinion it's just like do you want items do you not want items do you want a toxic community do you not want a toxic community I don't know Sins of a Dark Age is silly but it's free like most MOBAs alright the other update that I grabbed is for H1Z1, 
I wanted to bring this up because there's the Steam Marketplace update for it. So now the items that would drop from uh, like Battle Royale, you can sell them on the Steam Marketplace. I don't know how I feel about that personally because it, the hacking is already a problem. The game's in early, still in early access, and they're concentrating on selling things on the on the marketplace. I don't know why they're doing it. It doesn't it doesn't make any sense to me at all. Um, you could justify it, I guess, if the game was finished. Um, but you got people hacking and winning a lot of the battle royales. They haven't fixed that yet. Um, the community seems kind of pissed off about it. If you if you go onto the Reddit and read about it, and I agree, I don't know why they're al gonna allow players to sell stuff when they can't guarantee that you're gonna be able to take care of it. You know, or that you're gonna be able to win consistently by yourself without worrying about hackers coming in and you know just flying around stabbing you in the face. <clears throat> but yeah, you know, a bunch of quality of life changes, typical of uh, the patches H one Z one. You know, they're still pretty, pretty on top of everything that they're doing. But that's gonna do it for this episode. As usual, uh, all the reviews move to earlyaccessmedia.com. So check all that out there for the podcast. Go to earlyaccesspodcast.com. Um, the live video of the podcast is gonna be on YouTube youtube.com slash early access and follow me on twitter early access pc um but that's gonna do it for this episode i'll see you guys next time on i guess it's thursday yeah see you guys thursday <laughs>